Hi, this is Terry Couty with Deep Sea Foundation, and I have the privilege of sitting today with Kirsten Litz, who is a patient advocate. Um, we are in downtown Seattle with Eric I at Eric I Restorative Tattoos, and he does uh, post mastectomy restorative tattoos of really two different kinds artwork for post mastectomy patients and also nipple and areola um, restorative tattoos. And the reason I wanted Kirsten to do this interview today uh, with Eric is because she's had a decorative tattoo on her side, not, not you know, a, a post mastectomy to speak of, but I think she can speak about the tattoo process. And so that's what we're gonna talk about with um, Eric now, so I'm going to let you two take it over, Kirsten and Eric. Wow. Um, so yeah, I one thing when we were discussing about this last night that Terry and I brought up is that I think with post mastectomy um, tattoos, there's two types. You can have you can ask for the decorative. I would like the lilies or the stargazers or whatever or the birds or what to cover the scars, mm -hmm. or I'm looking for the restorative of the um, nipple and areola. And in my mind, when Terry and I were talking, I said, I think that when it comes to the scenic ones, that the patient's more in charge of what they want. They can come with an idea. But when it comes to the restorative one, that you're more in charge because it's more of a, to me, it's a fine art thing. And you know the color schemes, you know, if, if I bring you, like you guys talked about before, a picture, you at least know what I had before. Or if I still have one, you know what I have. I. I can't say make it, oh, I guess I could say make it smaller, but it would look silly. I mean, that you're more in control of that. It becomes more his canvas. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there is there's something to be said for both sides of that, <laughs> although in either case, I want the client to be uh, mostly in charge of it. Um, sure. I, I won't be, uh, of course, I'll give my advice, and I've done quite a few of these, and having an objective point of view, especially with the restorative uh, nipple tattooing, uh, it's easier for me to see what probably will look best as far as shape, size, dimension, and present it to the client, and they can fine tune that. With uh, decorative or illustrative tattoos, it's you definitely want the client to be in charge of what they are getting, uh, but you want to choose an artist whose style that you that speaks to you, and then let them do their style the way that they can do best. So that is it's collaboration. Uh, Either way, it's collaboration. The the decorative ones are, are certainly more uh, of a collaborative process, though. And that so, sounds like shared decision making. I know it me. does. It I was thinking that there, there's um, a, yeah. When it, so, yes, because when I had my first one done, which I had in between my um, reconstruction and my initial mastectomy, I I was I brought an idea to yes. the artist, and I said, "This is kind of what I'm thinking." And between the two of us and another individual, we came up with something I'm very happy and very personalized to me. Now, with doing the nipple one, I just want it to look that when I'm changing my swimsuit in the locker room and if somebody sees it, it looks like they just kind of glance and go, okay, yes. whatever, not, oh my God, what is that? Yeah, Where? I mean, that's my goal with restorative tattoos. My, my ultimate goal is when you look in the mirror that you're not, you just don't think about it. You don't think I have a tattoo there or I, there's nothing that you just don't think about it. That's the goal with that. With the decorative tattoos, I want you to be looking at that all the time. I want you to think that that's lovely. I want you to want to show it off. Uh, so it's a whole different thing. And it, with decorative, it's not always a matter of simply covering scars. Uh, it's a matter of distraction. Um, they, they go a long way towards, uh, you know, just not having you think about that there ever were scars there. So uh, they don't have to follow the path of the scars. They just, there's something there that that's what you're looking at is the goal with, with the decorative tattoos. Kind of it becomes part of the healing process. That's what it's been described to me yeah. as, so yeah. I can see that. And then does the quality or the shape or the, I know as the scar goes, starts from start to years out, it changes. I mean, does that, play into this as well? Um, it, 
We wait until the scars have settled enough that it, that's not an issue with the, the tattoo. Um, of course, your body changes as you age. Things move and shift around, but a well-designed tattoo follows the body and follows the musculature that's underneath the skin even in a way that should always complement the area. But, you know, as you get older, everything changes a bit. So. Sounds like you give a really uh, comprehensive talk too about all of that with your patients you're telling us now i'm assuming this is all information you yes yeah that's yes. great i like that absolutely yeah i mean okay. ultimately i want uh my clients to be my ultimate goal is that they are happy so mm -hmm. i listen but i i can advise because i've done this for quite a while so yeah it's collaborative very awesome. good okay have you ever i just thought of this question have you ever had someone come in and you look at their scar and you say you're not ready for a tattoo yet absolutely um we've had situations where somebody's booked you know two months out and come in and been pretty disappointed that when i see it in person i i can't tattoo over it but it's a case where it's you're always err on the side of caution sure um and i recommend waiting longer than generally the plastic surgeons recommend for uh, for getting tattooed over these areas because you don't want to have more procedures stacked up you've had enough of those so if i can get your tattoo done in one shot that's my goal not have you come back and have a touch up because it wasn't ready yet i like, I like that yeah i like what this guy's saying me too <laughs> thanks eric thank, thank you, you so much thanks kirsten you're welcome Absolutely.